Maurice Simpson has lived his whole life with massive tumors covering the right side of his face. Why me? Why do I have to look like this? Specialist Dr. Jason Hunt believes he can remove the tumors and rebuild Maurice's face. Maurice's most severe case of all the patients I take care of. Reggie Bibbs also has tumors on his leg and face. Terrible childhood experiences have shaped his life. People would just scream and run in fear. Now Maurice is going on an incredible journey that will take him from the birth of a new son to a life-changing friendship with Reggie and a whole new face. We're going to cut away the bandages and take a look at things. But will he finally get the face he's always wanted? In Utah, 34-year-old Maurice Simpson is heading to work on his bike. It's only a 20-minute journey, but he loves every minute of it. Riding on my bike is my getaway. It's just you and the bike. Hidden behind his helmet, Maurice could be any ordinary commuter, except for one detail. I put my helmet on, you know, about this much hangs out. The only thing that I am really self-conscious about is that one part just hangs out a little bit. Maurice has neurofibromatosis, or NF, a rare genetic disorder causing nerve cells to mutate into disfiguring tumors. The condition isn't painful, but has taken over the right side of his face and blinded his right eye. The shocking appearance of many NF sufferers leads them to live life in the shadows, but not Maurice. Go team, one, three. One, two, three. Go team. All right, there we go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're right, sir. Thank you. You have a great day. Thank you. As the manager of a busy local restaurant, there's nowhere to hide. Guest number 379. You have a good one. See you in the morning, right? Working with the public means coping with people's reactions to his face on every shift. You see you walk through the door. My mentality with people staring is if you're under eight years old, you can pretty much stare all you want. Nine to like 13, I still give a little bit of leeway, but not much. And then from 13 to an adult, you know, if you're staring at me, it's, you, you don't know what you might get. Maurice's positive attitude is a hit with his customers. Well, there you go. Thanks. All right, have a great day. He's like your best friend the moment you meet him. Me personally, I, I think that would take a lot. You know, I mean, I, I wake up in the morning and I have a zit on my face, and you know, and it's like, you know, but <laughs> so I mean, something like that. It's just incredible that he can just be like, eh, no big deal. After a grueling 10-hour shift, Maurice returns home. Dinner time. Dinner time. It's summer vacation and his wife, Charity, is preparing lunch for their four children. Oh, my, oh my God. And you have to do the help? I want to help. I want me to get you out your way? I want you to do what you normally do. What I normally do. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Maurice and Charity have two boys, six-year-old Maurice Jr. and three-year-old Jalen Allen. They also care part-time for Maurice's two older children, 13-year-old Shayla and 11-year-old Rashawn. What are you doing? I ignore them until somebody starts crying. Maurice inherited the NF gene from his father. Although each of his children had a 50% chance of getting it from him, none of them are carriers. That's how we do it. Here, honey. Oh, yeah. Fish and chips. Maurice met Charity when he saw her working in a deli and asked her out. Good game. Look at Bam. I wasn't bothered by the way he looked. I just was impressed with how much confidence he had, and it was just really comforting to be with somebody like that. 
100,000 Americans carry the NF gene. For 95% of sufferers, that means coffee-colored spots on their skin and small tumors around their bodies, which can turn malignant. But just 5% develop severe tumors like Maurice. From the day he was born, nerve cells on the right side of his face began to mutate into disfiguring tumors. Kids called me everything you can think of. He called me Elephant Man, uh, One-Eyed Willie. I used to just sit in the room and cry and ask why. Why me? Why do I have to look like this? But things were about to get even worse. When Maurice was just eight, his one true friend, older brother Alan, was brutally murdered. I really felt like there was nothing good coming out of life at that point. In the years that followed, Maurice had eight major facial surgeries. Although his NF tumors weren't life-threatening, doctors believed they could improve his appearance. But aged 14 and bitterly disappointed with the results, Maurice decided to accept his looks and get on with his life. That's when I really decided I wasn't going to be ashamed ever again. Maurice threw himself into work, marriage, and fatherhood never letting his appearance hold him back. 16 years after his last facial surgery, Maurice's unbreakable spirit so impressed a customer that the man made an incredible anonymous gesture. He offered to pay the full costs of cosmetic surgery to give Maurice a new face. Everybody always asks me, well, who is he? What's his name? I'm like, I just call him a guardian angel. But after spending years learning to be happy with his face, could he now go through with more surgery? Knowing he might never have the money to pay for the operation himself proved decisive. You don't run across people like him every day. I mean, surgery's not cheap, and he budgeted to spend $300,000 on a total stranger. Now, just months after his secret benefactor made his offer, Maurice is taking his first steps toward his facial reconstruction. Okay, so you'll meet with the physicians. We'll also do some lab work. Do you get a pretty okay? He's come to the Huntsman Cancer Institute for a pre-surgery examination. It's normal to have, have a high. Really? Yeah. But everything is about to change. An MRI scan of Maurice's brain reveals that his NF tumors have critically weakened his skull. A large pouch of his brain is bulging into his eye socket. Maurice's life is on the line, and Dr. Jason Hunt is shocked by the findings. There's actually a neurofibroma that's sitting where the eye should be. And as we continue to scroll further into the face, we can then see the encephalocele or the outpouching of the brain that has developed because the skull has been thinned. The smallest blow to Maurice's exposed brain tissue could easily kill him. With no pain or symptoms, it's come as a total surprise. A week later, and Maurice is just minutes away from life-saving surgery to repair his brain. His cosmetic facial reconstruction will have to wait. His anonymous benefactor may potentially have saved his life, but today's surgery into the unknown will leave him fighting to survive. Definitely lost enough blood that we're having to start to get some back. Thirty-four-year-old Maurice Simpson has neurofibromatosis, a rare condition that results in tumorous overgrowths on his body and face. These tumors have weakened his skull, causing part of his brain to bulge through. Now, surgeons at the Huntsman Cancer Institute in Utah are urgently trying to repair the damage. But cutting through the NF tumors is causing serious bleeding. He required multiple blood transfusions. Definitely lost enough blood that we're having to start to get some back. 12 hours of surgery and multiple blood transfusions 
have put Maurice's life on the line. Lead surgeon Dr. Jason Hunt has no choice but to call time on the operation. Maurice, you're waking up. Take a deep breath for me. At this point, it made the most sense to stop while he was still medically stable. When he's finally wheeled into recovery, Maurice's condition is serious. Dr. Hunt and the team repaired Maurice's skull and the lethal bulge in his brain, but the cosmetic facial reconstruction will have to be postponed until a later date. We'd achieved a lot of the goals that we had set out to achieve, but we knew we would have to come back at a later time and tackle the large neurofibroma in the lower portion of his face. Here. It's okay, sweetie. It's six days before Maurice finally wakes up. Oh, honey, honey, it's okay. It's okay. Just lay back down, baby. The doctors were talking about him maybe having some brain damage. It was hard seeing him like that, and when he finally opened his eyes, it was the first time I cried. What's up, fellas? How you doing, man? Uh-oh. How are you? Just five months after nearly losing his life on the operating table, Maurice is going for a workout at his local gym. The surgery to repair his skull and brain hasn't caused any long-term damage. And despite not getting his facial reconstruction, Maurice's confidence is 100% intact. If I walked in this gym and walked away from the mirror, you know, that's, that defeats the purpose of me going to the gym. I mean, I go, I go to the gym to improve my health, improve my body, and become I can be for the least. And my wife, of course. <laughs> Still determined to go through with the cosmetic surgery offered by an anonymous benefactor, Maurice will be going back into the hospital in a few months. He'll have his NF tumors removed and his face reconstructed. And there's another reason for Maurice to be excited. His wife, Charity, is pregnant with their third son. It's going to be a boy, so can't wait for him to get here. Really, really excited. Despite his joy, Maurice is deeply worried. His new son has a 50% chance of inheriting the NF gene from him. Maurice gets tearful, usually just between the two of us, because he's very frightened of the children having NF. In Houston, Texas, 46-year-old Reggie Bibbs also has neurofibromatosis. His tumors have taken over the nerve cells of the left side of his face, leaving him with just 10% vision in his left eye. Although it's not easy, he starts every day with a shave. With the right side, it's, it's easier. The left side, I have to use both hands, and I have to raise the, the, the tumor up and, and shave under. Okay, thanks. Reggie lives with his mom in the house he grew up in. Unmarried and with no children, his faithful companion, Shiner, is his best friend. Reggie's been walking around this quiet suburb for as long as he can remember. But he's never had the confidence to venture much further. I was eight months old when I moved here. So I've been here 45, 46 years. Reggie's neurofibromatosis first appeared in his foot at a young age. Before long, he was struggling to walk. Tumors had begun to appear on his face. Although his family were supportive, 
early reactions to the way he looked shaped his confidence outside the house. I've had some really bad experiences. There would be people that would laugh and point. There would be people that would just scream and run in fear. It was terrible. Reggie became too scared to leave his home. My sisters and brothers, they would go out to movies, uh, have fun, and I would just stay at home. So I was afraid of what someone might say, and I just stayed in. Reggie inherited the NF gene from his mom, Dorothy, who passed it to four of her six children. But it wasn't until late in life that she even knew she had it. When I started going to the doctor, having my children, the doctors told me uh, that's what I had, neurofibromatosis. Tragically, five years ago, Reggie's older brother, Ronnie, lost his battle with a small NF tumor that turned malignant. We were going to the doctors every day. He was very sick. And then cancer just spread it to his body. And he just passed away. Like Maurice, Reggie lost his best friend. But Ronnie's death was the catalyst for him to reach out to the online community. He started the Just Ask campaign, a website encouraging people to ask him about his condition. It was an instant success. I can feel just like anyone else. I don't have to hide. I never have had that kind of freedom uh, before my website. Through his website, he's met other people with NF, including Maurice. Now he's accepted an invitation to visit him in Utah before his next operation. It's a massive step for Reggie. His leg makes traveling difficult, and he's terrified of how people might react when they see him. I just want people to not be afraid of me, and I want people to be my friend. In Utah, Maurice's wife Charity has gone into labor with their third child. It's a tense moment for Maurice. Amazingly, so far none of his children have inherited the NF gene from him. But will his new son be the first? In Utah, neurofibromatosis sufferer Maurice Simpson and his wife Charity are about to have their third child. There it goes, huh? Just to walk in. If you want to go ahead, take a deep breath. Deep breath. Grab the back of your thighs. And go ahead and roll forward and stay down. Now hold your breath. Six, You're doing great. seven, seven eight, 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 nine. You can take another deep breath and fill your lungs up. And push the chin down. Put your chin down. There you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. It's a boy. Oh, it's a boy. It's a boy. Oh my gosh, look at him. As long as you're careful. Everyone's anxious. If the baby has discolored patches on his skin, it will indicate he's inherited the neurofibromatosis gene from Maurice. It's a tense wait as the nurses carry out a check. If that's worth anything, he's. Oh, he's healthy all over. Yeah, I'll just see that. He's a healthy boy, honey. Thank you. For now, he's given the all clear. Further tests at a later date will be needed to confirm it. You cannot. I love him. He's beautiful. He's gorgeous. Look what we did. You did. Such a good job. You did. I feel way better. Yes, you did. With the safe arrival of his new son, Maurice can now concentrate on getting in shape for his upcoming facial surgery. In Houston, 
neurofibromatosis sufferer Reggie Bibbs is getting ready for a doctor's appointment. When I get up in the morning, before I do anything, I have to put my sock on to keep my leg from swelling. As well as his face, Reggie has smaller NF tumors on his arms, while the tissue of his left leg has been completely overtaken. A latex stocking helps stop his foot swelling throughout the day. It's tight, but once I get it on, it's okay. Um, but if it's tight, it works better. Surgery to remove the tumors is extremely difficult as NF overtakes the nerve cells and the tumors bleed heavily. Like Maurice, many painful childhood operations led Reggie to vow never to go under the knife again. But six months ago, Reggie was asked if he would take part in the medical trial of a new drug treatment. Hi, Reggie. I'm Hello. Dr. Abier. How are you today? I'm doing great, thank you. Today, he's visiting the University of Texas in Houston to find out if it's working. Okay. Uh, you're doing all right, though. I'm doing great. Still a little bit there. Yeah. Reggie is one of 50 volunteers with NF testing the results of the direct application of the drug rapamycin to one tumor. The research team knows it can reduce tissues. They hope that one day it'll provide an alternative to surgery for people with NF. These growths, we hope, can be interfered with and regress as a function of direct application of a medicine onto the skin. We talk to patients about it sort of being a balloon that blows up that we then let the air out of. You're so pretty. Reggie's been applying rapamycin to one small tumor on his arm for five months. Now he's excited to see if it's actually shrinking. Okay. Great. Uh, how are things going so far? Things are going really, really well. I really see a difference right here. Right here, I don't know if you remember marking it, but Absolutely. you remember, look, I think these two used to meet. So it's regressed quite a bit, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. It seems uh, that these are small changes, but, but in fact, it's, it's huge, given the fact that no one has ever managed to find uh, any sort of treatment that reduces the size of these. Mm -hmm. It's great news. If the drug is approved, NF sufferers might one day be able to use it to treat their tumors, which, wrapped around nerve cells, are difficult to operate on. Now Reggie must prepare himself for the journey to Utah to meet Maurice. That's it. But the 1,000-mile journey means facing the crowds at two busy airports, one of Reggie's worst nightmares. When I travel outside of Houston, it's like a new world. There's a little nervousness when I frighten someone where someone is not really used to seeing me. Hey, you ready to go? I'm ready. I'm on time. Okay, yes you are. Okay. Reggie's friend Steve is coming along for moral support. I'll say bye to Shiner. Bye, Shiner. See you in a couple of days, Shiner. In Utah, Maurice and his eldest daughter, Shayla, are looking forward to meeting Reggie. This will be the first time Maurice has ever met someone else with NF. Hi, my name is Reggie Bibbs. I was born with neurofibromatosis, and after a short, going to school was difficult. Children tried to hurt me. Neighbor kids protected me. That's how it was. That's how it goes down. That's how it was with me. I am not as adventurous as I would like to be. My disability keeps me from complete freedom. We're going to have to share some stories. I can't wait. Now, Reggie is just hours away from meeting Maurice, and for the 45-year-old, it's going to be an unforgettable trip. My son Matthew has it out. I want you to know that your bravery is, it's tremendous, Thank okay? You.
Reggie Bibbs is traveling to Utah to meet fellow NF sufferer Maurice Simpson. But first, he has to face his fears in a crowded airport. My worries are when you go to a new airport, there are new people, and am I going to be accepted? Will I frighten someone? But far from being frightened, for one traveler, seeing Reggie has made his day. This is my son, Matthew. Uh-huh. Matthew has it. Yeah. you got to be kidding. No, sir. Wow. And I, I saw your website on the back of your shirt and pulled it up on my phone and, and saw what it was. And I just uh, thank you. I just want to thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Bring, bringing the awareness of this to other people. It's, it's hard for people like me to do it because people can look at me, they don't understand. And I just I want you to know that your bravery is it's tremendous. Thank okay? you. Thank you. So nice meeting you. You too. Thank you. The encounter is proof that Reggie's Just Ask campaign is working. Now he's looking forward to meeting Maurice. This is the moment they have both been waiting for. Come on in. Hey, how you doing? All right, how are you? How you doing? Great. All right. This is my wife, Charity. Hello. And my son. Hi. This is my daughter, Shayla. Hi. This is my mother, Brenda. Look, I hate you. Oh, oh make it a mess, make it a mess. Okay, Let's have a seat. Okay. Maurice is hoping to find out more about Reggie's life back in Texas. Do you have a tight group of friends? You have one, one over at Ohio? Well, I have a, a couple of good friends that uh, are real close that help support me, but I always shut myself off because I'm always thinking I'm not going to be accepted. I have to say that I am just, I'm just so proud of where I am. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm so proud. I, I have so much fun with it, and when somebody's staring at me, and I'll be walking, uh -huh. and I, I act like I don't see them, but they just be staring. And by the time I get to them, I go, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Scare them, boy. Scare <laughs> them. I love it. I'm sorry. I, I got to do it. You know, I got to do it. You know? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> we have lots of fun with it now, you know. It doesn't take Reggie long to discover the source of Maurice's confidence. His mom, Brenda. You know, I had to just encourage him. Mm -hmm. to, you know, people well. going to stare. You know, mm -hmm. we got to get tough. That skin got to get tough. Yeah, and when right. he was just a little boy, we started that. Well, uh -huh. he first would turn away so people couldn't see that side. Uh huh. I tell him, no, son. Uh, That's that. Well, we're not, we're not going to well. do it like that. Uh huh. That is amazing. That is really, really great. Wow. Man. For Maurice, it's overwhelming to meet someone else with NF for the first time in his life. Family, baby. When he came through the door, it was like I could finally exhale. <sighs> I'm not alone. Somebody knows how I feel. I mean, all that, all that hit me at once. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming so to visit nice. us. It's time for Reggie to leave. Seeing Maurice with his wife and children leading a normal life has made a big impact. All right, man. Reggie, man, it was nice meeting you, man. Nice I'm so glad for you to come out, man. Thank you, too, man. Thanks for coming out, okay? Seeing Maurice and his family, the closeness that they have, it's just reminded me that it is possible to have it there and be positive and be happy. But will it inspire Reggie to embrace the world outside his house back in Houston? It's Maurice's last night at home. Tomorrow, he's going back into the hospital for a cosmetic facial reconstruction. He's eager to show eldest daughter Shayla that he's not worried about tomorrow's surgery. Let me explain something to you. What? I am probably... Oh my gosh, I'm the handsomest man in the world. I am probably top 100 most sexiest man in the world. <laughs> Okay. Joke, I know what I'm saying. I know it's hard for you to believe. You your, wish you were. I know it's hard for you to believe your dad is that high up there, but your dad is one of the 
top 100 sexiest man in the United States. Have you seen those bodybuilders? They have some big old muscular and everything. It's not, wait, wait. It's not, a, it's not about the muscle. It's about the hustle. Okay, you ain't got no hustle. <laughs> You're not getting allowed for a month. But Maurice's wife, Charity, is concerned that after years of trying to accept his appearance, he might not like his new face. I know I'll be okay with it. He's my husband. I know I love him, and, and I will do whatever he needs to happen. I just want him to be happy with the results. Charity isn't the only one worried. Tomorrow, Dr. Jason Hunt will change the way Maurice looks forever. I'm most worried that we're going to do a large surgery, but Maurice may not be happy with the final outcome. It's 8 a.m. Maurice is just minutes away from going into surgery. He's placed his trust in Dr. Hunt to give him the face he's always wanted. And I feel like we've had a pretty good discussion about our goals and, and what we can do and what we can't do. And right. You feel pretty comfortable with that, don't you? Yeah, I feel comfortable with it. Just don't make me look like the Joker. Right, <laughs> yeah. Maurice's wife, Charity, and mother, Brenda, say their last goodbyes. <laughs> I love you. Come on, mama. Don't cry. I'll be okay. Too late. Oh. Mama, I'm all right. This is the part where you need to pick out a good dream, Maurice. Where you want to go? Big breaths. The anesthesiologists put Maurice to sleep. Fill your lungs up with that oxygen. For Dr. Hunt, the pressure is on. Every decision he makes, Maurice will have to live with for the rest of his life. I'm most worried that we're going to do a large surgery to reposition Maurice's face to a location that we're happy with, but Maurice may not be happy with the final outcome. Decision. It's 10 a.m. Dr. Hunt makes his first incision. The team hope to be finished in six hours before Maurice loses too much blood. Immediately, it's clear that all the normal skin tissues have been replaced by NF tumors. You can see that this white tissue goes all the way up to the skin. That's why it's a difficult dissection because you're dissecting through the middle of tumor. With the tumors beginning to bleed heavily, every second counts. Got a fresh 15 blade scalp. Every cut is crucial to ensure Maurice has enough blood supply and healthy skin for his new face. I'm constantly double checking to make sure that I'm not going to resect too much. It's 11 a.m. Dr. Hunt removes the large piece of tumor. Probably, it's, it's probably more than half a pound of tissue. NF tumors can become cancerous. Maurice's will be taken to pathology and screened for signs of malignancy. It's now a constant battle to stem the blood loss from the tumor. When the bleeding stops, you think it's fine, then you relax it, and then all the bleeding starts again because they're very thin-walled veins. The team monitor Maurice's blood from suction at the wound and every blood-filled towel. Last time, he lost a quart and a half. Today, it's essential they stop before he reaches critical condition. Did 100 sponges? We used 100 sponges. Surgery has been underway for two hours. Dr. Hunt begins to reposition Maurice's features, starting with his right ear. The ear canal here should line up with his ear canal here. We need to try to move it, get it closer up to that location. A stitch into the muscle of the scalp holds the ear in position. As well as looking better, Maurice should notice a huge improvement in his hearing. As the three-hour point draws near, nurse Heather Skidmore updates Maurice's wife, Charity, and mom, Brenda. Um, everything is going well. Um, his vital signs are stable. We will call you in another two hours to give you an update. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Okay, bye. She said she'll call us back in another couple hours. While ocular plastic surgeon Dr. Kim repositions Maurice's eyebrow, Dr. Hunt removes a piece of deep skin tissue from his left leg. This tissue is about to play a key part in the most crucial stage of the operation, repositioning Maurice's mouth. So we're, right now we're pulling the corner of his lip at different vectors to see where it needs to be. We just kind of have to go by where we think it should be and then go up maybe an extra 10%. I would err on the side of stretching him less than pulling him more so he doesn't get that joker appearance. Dr. Hunt stitches the piece of fascia skin tissue from Maurice's leg onto the side of his mouth. Positioning is critical. If the doctors gauge it wrong, Maurice will have to live with the results for the rest of his life. Needs to be up a little yeah. bit. I think maybe that may be a little much for him here, probably to here. It's probably going to be pretty good. Dr. Hunt must account for swelling and the pull of gravity, but time's running out. He has to make a final decision. We're getting a little more than, a little overcorrected, yeah, just a little bit. The fascia tissue is stitched into position. Marking pin? Yeah, it'll scar into this area, definitely. And that's all we want it to do. Looks pretty good. In just under five hours, the team have finished. They begin closing the wound. Although the surgery is complete, the results are far from certain. Dr. Hunt goes to find Charity and Brenda. He's stable right now medically. So my biggest concern is whether or not he's going to have such significant swelling that it could undo some of the things that we did. You okay, Mom? <laughs> All right. Will Maurice get the face he's always wanted? It's 6 a.m. Maurice is recovering in intensive care. For Mom Brenda, it's been grueling seeing her son go through the same ordeal he endured so many times as a child. This is his life. This is his body. Whatever he wants to do, to, and it's going to make him feel better, I totally support. At a time like this, nothing is more important than family. The results of the surgery are in the balance. Maurice's NF tumors bled so much that the swelling could burst the stitches in his face. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Yeah. He's desperate to know if the pain has been worth it. That's enough for that. Maurice has five weeks of recovery ahead of him. Only then will he find out if the cosmetic surgery he's waited so long for has worked out. In Houston, Reggie Bibbs is getting ready for an evening out. Since meeting Maurice, Reggie is determined to spread his wings. Tonight, he's accepted an offer to make a speech about NF in front of several hundred people. Okay, let's go. Let's shoot. Lou Congilio has been friends with Reggie for 15 years. He's intrigued by the impact meeting Maurice has had on him. How was it up there in Utah? Did you have a good time? I had a wonderful time. Maurice is very outgoing. When I was talking with him, it was, it was just like I was talking to myself. For most of his life, Reggie was terrified of crowded places. But tonight, he's determined to enjoy his new confidence. I never believed that I would ever be able to attend uh, a game like this. It's Reggie's turn to address the crowd. Now there's no turning back. And today is a very special day. We have Reggie, who's not going to play Euro 5 of Matosis. 
the Just Ask Foundation is to create awareness for zero problem ketosis. We just want you all to uh, feel free to ask questions and learn more about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For Lou, Reggie's oldest friend, it's overwhelming to see him enjoying the spotlight. I am so proud of him. I don't know if I'd have the guts to do. What are you doing? Life is good. Life is good. I feel bad because I missed out on a lot. I, I missed out on meeting a lot of people that who was willing to accept me all along. I see what I miss now. It's wonderful. It is really, really wonderful. In Utah, it's been four months since Maurice had his cosmetic facial surgery. He's enjoying the freedom of the road again as he heads home to his family. During Maurice's 12-hour surgery, the medical team removed almost half a pound of tumor tissue from his face. When the bandages came off a week later, he had no idea what to expect. I can't believe they were able to remove how much they removed. There was a lot of swelling, but I could tell a difference immediately. And the biggest part is the bulkiness is gone. Now, after four months of healing, the results are incredible. They removed the bulkiness and my face is not sagging. And it's, they lifted it up and pulled back some skin. Took about, about that much out. Maurice's wife, Charity, was terrified that he might not like the results. I was a little scared to see what he was gonna look like. Just never really know, and I think he's happy, and I'm, I'm just happy that he's, he's happy. You good? <laughs> Looking at what the doctors were able to do, I love the way I look. My face is never gonna be like everyone else's, but that's what makes me unique, and I'm, I'm happy for it. And if it's at all possible, Maurice's new face has only added to his unbreakable spirit and lust for life. I still see that handsome guy when I look in the mirror. <laughs>